Sally's Midlife Adventures, Part 3, Power of the Dragon. Picking up where we left off, Sally is shocked to discover that she seems to have been the dragon who had transformed into a human baby when her Uncle Dan had attempted to slay the dragon all those years ago. Her best friend Emma had thankfully seen the whole hologram and slowly everything seemed to make sense, although it also didn't make sense at all. Sally, it's okay, we'll face this together. Emma said, as she hugged her shocked friend tightly. It's no wonder you have such striking green eyes, Sally. I've always been jealous of them, Emma laughingly mused as she comforted her dazed friend. What now, Emma? Sally asked, starting to regain her composure. Perhaps I have some powers I don't know about? Sally mused, flicking her hands about as if some sort of magic would appear sparkling about, and looking almost sad when nothing happened. She poked the fireplace to loosen up the burning wood and added some more logs to the fire as she suddenly felt a little chilly. Well, what have we learned about dragons from all our research so far? Emma mused. Dragons have a range of supernatural powers such as changing size or form and most are able to take human shape, fly among the clouds or hide in water. They can form clouds, turn into water and blend in with their surroundings by changing color. They are also able to glow in dark places Sally read from her notebook. Okay, so I wonder if I'm able to do any of these things, or if dragons lose all their abilities when becoming human. I would imagine they would lose it all once becoming a baby, Emma asked rhetorically. But didn't your Uncle Dan's notes also state that you will come into your own? Wait, I'll get the diary. Here it is, and it reads... Through much research, I've discovered that female dragons can transform to human babies if their lives are threatened. They keep their dragon soul, and when they reach the fiery stage of their lives, this is merely the beginning of their adulthood. Baby Dragonette will find her way back when the time comes, so I will continue to leave clues she can find, because this will be the beginning of her actual life, and she will need to learn to deal with it. When they reach the fiery stage of their lives... Sally repeated the words back to Emma. Fiery stage. I swear that's undoubtedly menopause and the freaking hot flashes. Oh my, Emma responded. Yes, that actually sounds ridiculous, but could be the turning point in your life, Sally. If you start changing back to a dragon, please remember I'm your friend, Emma quipped suddenly getting a burst of adrenaline coursing through her stomach, a little afraid for her life at the crazy realization. Don't be more weird than me, Emma, Sally retorted. I would never harm you, dragon or no dragon. I somehow doubt I'll change into one again. I know I've acted like one sometimes, but no, I'm human to stay, I think. No sooner had Sally uttered the words when suddenly she felt a familiar warmness engulf her body. Slowly rising as if she had been lit on fire from the inside, she broke out into a cold sweat all over, feeling hot and cold at the same time. Oh no... Sally mumbled annoyingly, ripping off her jersey. Talk about the devil. Here comes a hot flash now. They're so infuriating. Sally, your eyes, Emma quipped. They're glowing, and so is your emerald pin. Sally felt very strange, but somehow she could see different colors, which she had not seen before. It was as if she could see in the dark corners of the room. Emma, switch the lights off quickly, Sally shouted. Emma complied as something clearly extraordinary was happening, and they weren't sure how much time they had before it passed. Emma, I can see in the dark. Clearly. This is wonderful. It's like some sort of infrared being emitted by my eyes and their emerald pin. Emma was totally in awe and stood speechless for a few seconds, embracing the strangeness of it all, of what was happening to her best friend and being able to be a part of it. Sally, I'm going to turn on the lights now, Emma said as she stumbled in the dark and reached for the light switch. Mist fell and sliced her arm on a bookshelf. Oh darn, I've cut myself open. Sally saw it all play out in the darkness, as if in slow motion. She was by Emma's side within seconds and caught her before she fell again. Sally noticed a green glow around the cut on Emma's arm. The longer she looked at it, the warmer the glow became. Sally then realized it was coming from her eyes. Oh wow, Emma! Sally almost shouted to her friend. My eyes seem to be emitting some sort of warm green light, and look, it's slowly sealing your wound. Emma was lost for words. They switched on the light and both inspected her arm. 
which now was a slightly pink scar. Sally looked shocked, but excited at the same time. She noticed another green glow coming from the side of the fireplace and felt an uncontrollable urge to investigate. Emma, how about another trip on the wild side? Sally happily grabbed a hand, drew a portal sigil on the side of the fireplace, smacked it and whoosh they found themselves in the upstairs turret of the manor. There must be a reason we landed up here, Sally mused, scanning the darkness for any light with her newly found infrared ability. Great for you, Sally, but I'm in complete darkness here, Emma jokingly jibed at Sally. Oh, right, sorry, Emma. Yeah, take my pocket torch. Sally placed the torch in her friend's hand. See if you can find any strange drawings or whatnot. Suddenly a gust of wind came out of nowhere, as if a window had been opened. Sally checked the window of the turret, but it was closed tight. Just then, an apparition appeared, of a young boy dressed in 1700s clothes. Buckled shoes, stockings, breeches to his knees, shirt covered by a waistcoat, some sort of beret on his head. The apparition bent down and took something out of the floor, wrote on it and placed it back in the floor, and then dissolved into nothingness. How oh, strange, Sally pondered aloud. Did you see that, Emma? Yes, I did. And I'm not sure how to feel about any of this anymore, Emma answered in a very shaky voice. First magic, then finding out my best friend was a dragon, now ghosts. Perhaps we should just see if there's any loose brick or something where he was. Right, good idea. Sally chuckled at her obviously distressed friend as she felt the floor. Look, the floor is made out of ancient cobblestones, Emma. Sally removed her emerald pin, pressed the green amethyst at the base of the handle, and the emerald dagger popped out in a swirling green mist. This is starting to become pretty handy. Sally laughed happily as she started prying the cobblestones where she had seen the apparition of the boy place something strange. Success. One of the cobblestones was loose. A little more prying with the dagger, I mean it had been a few hundred years if the apparition was anything to go by. Sally eventually levered out the stone and found a small silver treasure box with beautiful intricate designs. She slowly took it out of the hole, placed it carefully on the ground and she and Emma inspected it thoroughly. Open it! Open it! Emma exclaimed excitedly. I can't wait to see what's inside. Sally slowly opened the lid with her fingers, ever so gently. It had a beautiful red velvet interior with a silver pen and notebook. But this made no sense at all. If it was from the 1700s, they never had pens. Then they had inkwells. This was becoming stranger and stranger. Hardly able to contain their inquisitiveness, Sally picked up the notebook and opened it. The year here is 1716. Everything is not as it seems. Somehow I've slipped back in time, quite accidentally. I've befriended a young lad, Thomas, who seems intrigued with my entire predicament and has vowed to assist me as best he can. He will continue to note any occurrences for me in my notebook as I have been stuck here for six months now and am quite concerned I will not be able to get back to the 1980s. The 1980s? Sally said aloud. Holy smoke, do you think this is Uncle Dan? Read on! Emma almost shouted. Perhaps there's more. Mr. D escaped our time. He was gone in a flash and some strange whoosh. I hope to find the secrets to his travels, but alas, I found nothing. I will continue to keep notes when I can, without being discovered, and in hopes that Mr. D will find them. Safe travels, Mr. D. Please allow me to follow you, for I have nothing but persecution here. I fear for my life once the new master returns. Your friend Thomas, the notes read, and then there was nothing further. How strange, it just ends, Sally mused. Perhaps they both escaped? Sally, do you think you could do that thing with the emerald pin again, where it shows a hologram? Emma asked suddenly in hopes of discovering more to all of this. Sally looked at Emma, suddenly deep in thought, trying to remember how she created the previous hologram. Perhaps I can, Sally mused, looking at the dagger intently. She slid the blade slowly between the two nearest cobblestones, staring at it intently. Instantly, a vision started playing out in front of them again, making them jump back unexpectedly. It was the boy, leaning over the cobblestone he had just replaced. A flash appeared, a misty cloud revealed a tall, slender man that appeared from nowhere. Uncle Dan. He hugged the boy, grabbed his hand, drew a sigil, slapped it, and in, in a whoosh, they disappeared. Oh my word, Emma. 
Uncle Dan managed to rescue Thomas. I wonder if he took him back to the 1980s. That's wild. Sally almost shouted. Things were becoming extremely exciting like pieces of a puzzle were slowly being slotted in. She took Emma's hand, drew her portal sigil and took them home. After they reappeared back in front of the fire of the manor, Sally's mind was buzzing with excitement. She was generally an overthinker, as was Emma. However, she needed to ask Emma a question now, which could change everything. Emma, where and when did you meet Tom 